Hello, and today in our PHP for Designers series, we're going to be talking about the use of PHP cookies to store data about the user on a on that user's computer for your particular website, and for that to be specific to your website. So, an example of this is if you enter your username and password, yeah, and there's a Remember Me option, and you check that option, what that's doing almost certainly is creating a tr cookie on your computer with a specific ID to that website wh where it has a reference to that data that you st that, that you entered and that's stored on the server so the, the next time you um the next time you go to that go to that page given it's in given it's in a certain time frame um that the cookie's been set for, that those those details will 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 get filled in uh, as long as you have cookies enabled in your browser, which literally like almost almost everybody does. Um, providing you have cookies enabled in your browser, it will find that ID, find that it's for that website, and then get the information that it needs. And then plunk it in in the field. Do whatever it needs to do to it. In this example, we're going to be getting some data from a form, putting it putting it into a cookie if the user asks us to, and then plunking the uh, that data back into a form if they asked for it. Um, and then. And then giving them one, giving them an option to remove it just in case they want to. So, let's have a butchers at this example. I've tried to shoot this video so many times, and the, I don't know. There's just there's just something in my explaining cookies where I I like I like my videos to be as perfect as possible, and especially now when I've improved the video quality and I. When I've been doing these cookie videos, something something seem seems to go wrong in every video. Uh, um, in, in, in spite of the fact that anyway, um, last time I tried to do it, I I done all my do I did all my effects, um, and it um, I I just literally clicked export and it froze so I was not very happy and that was before I had a chance to back it up so as I was saying before I interrupted myself let's just pop open that form and you've seen this a million times because the, the example that we're going to use is the contact form on our website because you see it gives you the option to save your name and email in the form of a checkbox so, um, let's just fill out my real details and then save it in a cookie and then look at what that looks like. I need to um, submit this entire form to get past the validation because uh, you need to you need to actually um post this form to the what's called the action um parameter or whatever you, if you know what a form is whatever you put in the action because you need it to actually go to a script that is going to get these variables that have been passed to it and actually do something with them so that's why we actually need to, for real, submit this contact form. I'll just say it's other. And then, just put some stuff in there. And then you notice we have a 
save name and email. So I'm I'm gonna check that and then uh, you get sort of get to see what happens if I hit send. Obviously, sent an email which will see a notification pop up in a minute. But that's not what we're interested in at this time because I've I've done a previous video on that. Um, but what we're interested in is if we go back to the contact page, those values that we have submitted, the system knows by some logic that I wrote, which we'll look at in, in just a second, that there's a cookie there, and it, it, it gets this information and fills it in, so the user doesn't have to fill it in the next time. And then, as, l as long as that data found, um, the user has not been to the, this checkbox changes to instead of save name and email to remove previously saved name and email and it's a little smaller um a little smaller um because the odds are if they saved it once they're not going to want to remove it afterwards but just to be nice um can they not to remove it but um it's nice if if they don't if they don't check that the next times they come they um this um cookie will last on their computer for the any any, any excuse me a minute okay so as i was saying we're doing some smart logic to check if the user's already been already been on here and already said their name and email and if we do that we don't want to give them a uh, save name and email we want to give them a remove name and email and the odds are they're not going to want to they're not going to want to click there after they, they've saved it um but it's not nice just to give them the, the option full di full di disclosure kind of thing uh, if they if they don't choose to click that which odds are most of them won't because why would they? Because the the name's not going to change, and likely their email's not going to ch change. And um, so it's a little a little smaller and just a little less obvious. Um, because they're probably not going to click it, but the, but the option's there anyway. Um. So so I'll show you kind of how all that logic pans out in a minute. Um. But. If we um so so we've we've seen that it works right. Let's uh look at how it works. Okay, so I think where we should start is not at the contact form, although we'll need to look at that. We should start at what 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 um, check what sets and checks the um, variables. It's all this. Um, it's all this block of code here, which I have highlighted in blue, and this all lends itself um, well to um, to that logic that I was talking about that I was talking about before. So um, let's focus on this top bit for now this is what actually creates the cookies we check if if a part of the request variable was passed and that part was called save details and if, if we look in our um code our uh um checkbox has a name of save dash details so they match so if that was passed i.e. if if the checkbox was exactly equal to on then we want you to set the cookies if it wasn't on then the, the just continue down but if it was on we run this set cookie function and we give a name and we want this to be unique so the first parameter is the name this the second parameter 
and again we're going to grab the the what's been entered into the field with the name of name and we can look at that N name name so that's whatever's been entered in into the, this field and then so so we've got name value and then we as the last parameter we could put two more I think but we run this t time function and this is um this is uh providing that this is how long it's going to stay on their computer for um providing that obviously they don't reinstall windows or clear out their browser cache which might happen we we um when this time function which basically gives us a um gives us a number um just a plain text number which is the amount of seconds since um 1970 january the first 1970 and that is basically unix time and you don't need to understand that but that's basically the current time at which the variable has been set so basically the current time in which the the user inputted all, all this information so um but we need to we we need, no, need to have it we need to have it exist for more than like a microsecond because that's what this would do so we do the current time plus um this which i just looked up on google it's how many seconds are in half a year so and the same for that one so both these cookies will last half a year so that's what happens if the um if the if there's no cookies and if the save details is equal to one however if it's removed details i.e that's been passed if that exists then that must mean there's um then that must mean there's stuff that has been has been previously there and I'll show you the logic for that in a minute. That's actually in the contact form file. It's one of the free lo uh, uh few the logics in there. So if if the input with the name of remove details is exactly equal to on then we want to do this stuff in the second block and this is a little weird because we we need to pass in exactly the same stuff to the set cookie function except when when we do when we do this time thing we do um the current time plus uh the current time minus any value which means in the past so so that 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 that, that means that cookie won't exist at all. That that seems a little bit weird to me. A little bit a kind of hackish hackish way of doing it. But that's the official way they do it on the W three, and the same for that one. So if that was equal to on, then we're going to oblige to their request. I'm going to remove the cookies. That's basically what this is saying. Even though it says set cookie, and it's the exact same function. It's this time. Um, this, this time bit that makes the difference to whether it exists or not. So let's we've we've um we've said what happens if either of them exist, but we haven't we haven't looked at how the contact form deciphers which one should exist. That um is way down here. Um, th this is the weird way of doing it. A little server intensive. I probably should have used an an else statement, but I hate using else statements. And this this isn't a very high traffic site, really. So I'm just doing two completely separate if statements. Um. So basically, the, the code inside here will execute if the cookie doesn't exist which is 
what this exclamation mark means if, if the is set function doesn't return true for this that then echo basically echo out the the save details check logs which is the first thing you see and then again we're not doing an else statement we're just adding the if but then we're running a completely separate else statement that's just the way I wanted to do it um that all it does is um and that only check to see if it's not set so this will run if it's not set but here we check to see if it is set meaning if there is cookies then we'll, then we'll want to remove that to change that to remove details so we can we can target things differently that's how the font size changes and stuff so we can do that all independently and you notice there's some text there so so that's basically that's basically all logic in the in the um form form file so i know that was a little bit confusing believe me i've been doing videos on it and trying to explain it for days um but that's basically how you're going about setting a php cookie and i hope you i hope you at least got something out of that thanks for watching if you if you'd like to donate if you like this screencast please come over to tom dot com slash about slash donate and you can hit the donate using paypal button Thank you for your support.